really appreciate you joining us today. I can see that we got a lot of people from Europe, from the US, from Canada, uh, many different time zones. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we uh, have another 56 minutes booked for this webinar. And we have uh, our very own Tom Harris, who will be the speaker tonight. And uh, today depends where you are in the world. Uh, we are going to discuss JIRA reporting and JIRA dashboards. Um, Tom will analyze different options you have, jump into live demo, and at the end, we, we're going to finish off with a Q&A session. I strongly recommend to stay till the end as we have planned also an Atlassian giveaway. So please uh, stay with us uh, till the end. Uh, we have uh, more and more people joining right now, 26, and we expect more, uh, more people to join in the next couple of minutes. So uh, I hope you guys have questions. Feel free to uh, share your questions in the chat room. And after the, after the live demo, um, we, we, we're going to address, address your questions. Hopefully we can uh, respond to all the questions. If we run out of time, uh, we'll be more than happy to get back to you individually and discuss your in the individual case. Um, it's really interesting for me as well. Uh, we were running a couple of polls on LinkedIn and uh, over 50% of people voted that they only using standard GR reporting without any apps. So I am pretty sure uh, you will be able to learn and see what, what's out there, what's possible. How could you improve your dashboards? How could you improve your Jira reporting? Uh, some guys are using um, tools like Easy BI, like Tableau. So yeah, there will be something interesting for everybody uh, during uh, the webinar today. Again, I strongly encourage you guys to share your questions with us. Uh, just take advantage of, of Tom being here and answering the questions, basically as a free consultancy. and. Uh, I can uh, guarantee that we're super honest and agnostic, and uh, we always recommend the best the best solution for for the specific case. Uh, I guess we will have people joining throughout the webinar, but uh, yeah, let's just respect people who show up on time and let's kick off. Over to you, Tom. Thank you. Let's get started. Okay, thanks, Yasek, for the introduction, and uh, hi everyone. Thanks for thanks for joining. So yeah, uh, as Yasek said, we're going to be going through. Uh, initially just a discussion about Jira reporting. Um, so my background is an Atlassian consultant and I've worked with dozens of companies at all sizes um, with all their different reporting needs. So what we're going to go through first is um, just an overview of what the built-in reporting dashboard reporting looks like in Jira, what options are available, um, and then discuss some specific limitations, just some, some gotchas, things you might not have realized um, can cause problems. And then uh, move on to look at what other add-ons are available. So if this is what we have out of the box, what options are available? And we'll go through um, quite a specific uh, demo of, of the custom charts app that the Old Streets create. I also want to talk you through and give you comparisons with, with other apps as we go through. So um, hopefully you'll, you'll find it interesting and you'll learn something um, new about the marketplace and Jira. Okay, so I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Okay, there we go. Cool. Okay, so this is where we're going to start. Um, hopefully this is familiar to a lot of you. This is just a, a standard built-in Jira dashboard. Um, now, straight away out of the box, Jira does give you some options. And um, here we have, uh, for example, the, the, the pie chart is a nice way to display, display data. And this is a two-dimensional statistic uh, pivot table. And this is really useful. This is something that's very commonly used by, by lots of people to visualize their data. Now, if this is all there is, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's a good start. And the, the way I talk to, to my customers about it is Jira is an amazing tool for, for putting data in. You know, get a team of people to, to bash away at the keyboard and you can generate a lot of tickets, loads of data, create automations, do anything clever. But getting that information and data back out can, can be really difficult. Um, this is, this is an example here. So with the, the built-in reporting, let's look at what options we have. So if we've 
have a dashboard and we want to actually look at data? Well, this is the very simple option. You choose what data you want to show, whether it's a project or a particular saved filter, and then you say what statistic you want to chart by. Okay, that's kind of it. That, no other options, whether you want it to auto-update. So it's great if you want to be quick, but one of the biggest frustrations um, is that you can't, for example, control the colors. It's just those colors every time. So what can happen is you'll come in tomorrow and the colors will be different if the, the issues have changed underneath. So while on the face of it, okay, the built-in reporting works, if you can't actually control how you visualize your data, it doesn't mean anything to your teams. And the idea of having data that's easy to visualize and consumable, so let's look at the two-dimensional filter statistic here. You want to look at all your issues, and this is it in size order, but there's not much you can do to control, say, the order of this or any groupings. So this means that, fine, it does display the data, but if it's not in an easy con to consume way, if you can't change the order, if you can't change add colors or change names, it's, uh, it's only as useful as the, the way you've set up your, your JIRA instance. And um, a lot of the time you don't know in advance exactly how you want to report. So this is something that uh, can be quite limiting. And again, just, just looking at it you can see that, that there's room for improvement. So let's see what options we have when it comes to this. So if you go to the Atlassian Marketplace uh, and look for reports, particularly in Jira, um, you have a few big options and very big players, right? So you've got Easy BI. Now Easy BI is the other end of that spectrum. So I just showed you the built-in reports where you've got, let's look at it again, literally two options, <laughs> what you wanna show and how you wanna show it. Okay, let's go to Easy BI. This is an enormously complex tool very very powerful covers all of your reporting needs if you can get if you can get it working and that's um as you can see here really really complex reports and if you fall short you can custom code brilliant right problem solved everyone's happy except how many people on this call or how many people in your organization know this custom coding language that's used by easy bi you know out the box day one you're like oh i want a pie chart with that color or this particular data set, well, you better start doing some YouTube tutorials on learning this custom scripting language. And if you don't have time for that, well then get some intern to do it and hope he never leaves. So you can see this is, this is, part, this is part of the problem. So Easy BI is really, really powerful, but the, the point I'm trying to make here is about democratization of data. Data is only as useful as the people that are able to, 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 to build the charts and consume it. So here's another one, Visual Script. This is one way you can use a scripting language again, but it requires custom code. Pivot tables, another simple example where you can display your data in a nice visual way. So, oh, and then finally, X charts. Again, this is um, another option where you can, you can create charts. It gives you some control um, and you can create some simple charts like this. But the solution again is, I hope you know, I hope you know Groovy Script, or I hope someone in your company does, because that's how you're gonna be creating these charts. Okay, so there's a bit of a trend you can see here is that the charts are only as useful as the people that can necessarily make them. So the, the reports are necessarily, it comes down to this earlier question raises the um, size of reports. So, what we're looking at specifically here is kind of instant data visualization. Um, if you want to see kind of really low level, just what's going on in a, in a, a team or a, a small number, medium number of projects. For large scale data trends, millions of issues, um, then you need a really powerful tool. And even tools like Easy BI start to fall down at that point because they're not necessarily built to do that big data processing. And at that point, that's when you need to start looking at tools like Ta Tableau, Tableau where you can have data lakes and actually pull in multiple data sources and do you know, uh, artificial intelligent analysis and get these data trends. Really powerful stuff, but, but again, that's a, a small subset. It's a niche on a niche and it requires a lot more money and a lot more investment of time and people. So let's look at a, a sweet spot in the middle. And that's what when we're talking today about custom charts and showing you how that can, that can help. And even if you don't end up using this app, everything I'm going to be talking about is just really good principles of how to manage your data, how to understand who is using it. So if you work through this example with me um, and see how custom charts can help, the questions that come from it and the answers hopefully will help your organization anyway. Okay, so here we go. So this is custom charts for Jira.
Um, straight away, the first thing about it is that it, it looks nice. It is a pretty app. And this is critical, I think, particularly in 2020 when people have a high standard of, of what they expect from the tools they use. We don't want this to look like it's from 1999. We want to be able to throw together a report in a few seconds. Um, anyone can do it without hours of YouTube tutorials and show something that they would be proud to have on, the, on a board in a meeting. If you put a lot of effort into your work, if you spend more than five seconds uh, working in JIRA and building things, you don't want your reports to look like you don't care about your work. So the way they look is actually really important. You want to have reports that look nice. Okay, so before we jump into exactly how this works uh, on a dashboard, we're gonna go to the playgrounds. So this is where I'm gonna be doing a quick demo for you to show you how this works. Um, this interactive app playground is available on the Old Street website, so any, anyone can jump onto this. You don't need to install it. You don't need to uh, have uh, any, any uh, installations or any demo instances. You can come to our interactive playground and do this for yourself. Okay, so here we go, we've got this chart. But let's jump into the editor. This is the powerful part that I wanna talk through with you and, and, and go through. So straight away here, you can see this is the, this is the gadget editor. And um, what you can see is, it's, it's WYSIWYG, it's what you see is what you get. Now, if this was the first time you're ever seeing this, I, I hope that, or have, have seen before that without any instructions, without any additional information or hour long tutorials, you can pretty much work out exactly what you need to do here. So let's talk through it. Well, we've got a chart and we want to, uh, we're looking at all of our issues and we pulled it in through a saved filter. This is a stat bar chart and you can see we're charting status grouped by assignee. And you can see that here. What's nice is that rather than just having big to small as the order, generally how charts come, what if you want it to mean something to you? You want to see it in chronological or process order. Well then it's really simple. We've got backlog at the start, that's great, but we want done to be at the bottom. So we're going to move it down. Just drag and drop, no custom coding. And the reason this is important is because this is how your team works. If your team is reporting by, um, if your team is working you know, on, on a Kanban board, they want to see their reports in, this, in the same way and you want anyone to be able to do it. So let's continue a little bit more and say, okay, we want closed to be at the bottom. In this example, what if we don't want to see blocks? It's not helpful for our team. They don't need to see what's in blocks at the moment. So rather than having to change this filter or do anything custom, we can just hide it. Again, making people drill down and focus on exactly what's needed and not getting necessarily lost in, uh, sorry, lost in data that's in the wrong order or doesn't make sense. Okay. Just one second. Cool. So another point uh, I mentioned earlier is about how you put the data into JIRA. So if anyone's um, had a situation where they've got, say, multiple statuses, and that's great, the testing team wants five statuses in test, ready for test, waiting for test, I like testing, you know, all of these things. I thought that's great, but there's not, that's not particularly helpful if you want to report. So let's use an example here of in progress and in review. Maybe we don't mind that they're two separate statuses and we want to merge them together. So in progress, and we're just gonna really easily inside the chart, merge this to in progress and in review. And you can see now it's one column, one bar, great. But we don't need the name, we want it to mean something to our team, so we're just gonna call it WIP. Now we've renamed that to work in progress without changing any JIRA configuration, without having to be an admin or know anything. Anyone can jump onto the dashboard, throw together a chart like this. This is now really concise, really clear, exactly what the team needs to see. We jump across. Also, like I said before, colors are really important to be consistent, so let's make them consistent. Every week when we see this report, we know Nick Fury is going to be blue, but actually we want it to be a bit more electric so we're going to go for electric blue that's it now every every week when we run this report or look at this dashboard for current sprint we're going to see really really consistent data which means this is actually useful suddenly your team can say oh i can see exactly what's going on consistent colors really easy to visualize data and whether you do this in custom charts or you export it to excel and do this th these key principles are still really important the fact that people can consistently look at those colors and know what they mean. This is one example is a signee, but if we um, jump back to here, for example, this is um, our live data that we have on our instance. And you can see this is the status by for the support tickets that come into our instance. So I need to know that light blue is always triage. So I can have it. So as soon as I see light blue, I know that's triage, 
someone's got to action this, someone needs to do something. Great, it's that simple. We can click, um, we can click on any of these and drill straight down into the data and then um, see it directly. So we've got that as well. Cool, so this was brilliant. You know, we've, we've, we've got the data we can see. This is not that much of a step up necessarily from the built-in charts, but, but let's go one step further and see well, what other data is there. Well, right now we're just counting issues. Great, but what if the data is more useful if you're working in a sprint and you want to see story points? Okay, well that changed quite a lot. So Van Helsing is apparently working on everything and the rest of the team is working on almost nothing from based on the story points. So that's a concern. And we can see that just by switching the different um, count options here. So you've got story points. You can also look at, say, the time spent um, or original estimates, and we can see where the estimates are, are being placed, and we can count. Um, also really useful is if, you're on, uh, if, you, if you've got custom number fields in Jira, just a number field, maybe cost, for example, um, or a scripted number field using script runner or a different add-on, um, you can count those values too. So this is an example here where every issue has the number two in that field. So you can see it's just added them up directly. Again, really useful if you want, uh, if you've ever been frustrated that Jira isn't a calculator, it, simple things like sum, like you would get in Excel, you can't actually see that and, unless you export the data. And a number of add-ons do provide these different functionalities, but this is just a way to see it in a really simple way. Okay, this is stacked bar charts as well. Okay, well, what if we wanna see, we actually would prefer to see grouped bar charts. You can switch between them. The data is all um, transferable between the different chart types. And as we said before, you've got the, the pivot table. So you can see the data like this. But again, really useful. You can actually display it in the way you need it for your teams. So the key takeaways are, are is that charts are very customizable and very easy to use. But, but more importantly, as I said, from a uh, a reporting perspective, it's understand who is going to be consuming your reports and who is going to be building them. So just because these massive tools are available, like the e e Easy BI and Tableau, that's great. And you might have 10,000 people in your company and two people know how to use them. So you're going to be either creating a bottleneck if you've got admins in your instance. And this is where my frustration came from, is that I was always a, an admin asked to create reports because no one else could. But if you have developers that know how to custom code Groovy, unless their full-time job is to create reports for other people, they could probably be doing something better with their time. And it's about making sure that everyone is doing the job that they're best suited for and not wasting time doing things over and over again that they don't need to. So you can see this is the 2D table with the, the percents as well. Um, and this is what's available inside the chart. So just to go into a bit more detail now, just get a bit more advanced um, for anyone that's interested. Cool, so we can, we can, we have a lot of options here. Um, we have uh, a lot of numbers, it works really well with Service Desk. It's uh, a lot of add-ons are supported as well, custom field add-ons uh, you can use here. But what if this isn't enough? What if you want something more complicated? Well, that's where, um, well, for, yeah, for of that. So you can use uh, advanced JQL directly inside the chart. So here we're going to do project equals support in this case, and now we can see that data. So what's nice about this, and I'll jump back to Jira in this case. How many people here have had a dashboard where they've created it and said, cool, this is my standard template dashboard. Now I just need to copy it for my 50 teams. <sighs> okay, well, good luck, because that's the rest of your day. So with Jira dashboards, because you're limited to setting a filter, for example, that means that when you copy the dashboard, okay, here we go. So you copy the dashboard. You then have to copy every single filter and change that filter for the new project in this case. You then have to make sure the permissions are set correctly on that filter so that everyone appropriately can see it. You then have to make sure the permissions are set on the new dashboard to make sure the right teams and people can see it. That's a lot of steps. Whereas if you could write JQL directly into the, into the gadgets, into the charts, you wouldn't need to have to recreate the filters worry about permissions. You could just edit the JQL. Well, let's go a step further than that. And what if you don't want to write JQL at all. What if a lot of people in your organization, um, a lot of people here on the poll have said that you know JQL, which is, which is great. So we're gonna go into what you can do but um, with JQL. But what if your team don't know it? Well, let's jump back to here and look at this. This is the simple search gadget. And what this allows you to do is simply connect these charts together. And I'll show you how this looks on a dashboard just here. So this, this chart on this dashboard you see is connected to the simple search gadget. So all you do is add it to the screen and click it on the list and connect it. Now, every issue is being pulled through from here. 
So if we know that there are some tickets maybe that contain the word admin that are needed, we can just run a search and you see all the charts now have dynamically updated for that reference. No JQL, nothing needed. So this becomes a living issue visualization searcher simply just by adding this to the dashboard. Okay, if you want to edit the JQL and have just a live JQL edit, sure, do that as well. So let's have an app, app name equals uh, custom, custom charts for Jira in this case. There we go, easy. So now I know this is for custom charts for Jira. I'm looking at all the information where it's to do with admin. If you know JQL, great. If you don't, just use the, the standard fields and you can add app name here, exactly the same as you just saw. You can see how this is the idea. It's trying to make it as simple as possible. There we go. Cool, so that's a simple issue visualization that uh, I, I found really useful to have on my, this is what I use every day in my support dashboards. Okay, so that's, that's all the, the basic features, but let's jump into something a bit more advanced. Custom JQL, so this is where most people find the value in, in custom charts, particularly the slightly more advanced users. What if you could write a JQL query directly inside the chart for every single data segment? So every bar on your chart could be, okay, I wanna see all issues that were due in January, where the assignee is Chris, it's not been escalated, but it has been flagged. Okay, well, just you can write it directly in as a custom JQL segment here. So we can set the colors directly. And in this case, I'll just, just for the ease of the example, show you. Cool, so that's project equals support, there you go. And we can see, we can rename it if we don't want to see the JQL, and there we go. So this means if you take this extension further, you can chart anything. If you can write JQL for it, if you have add-ons that provide JQL extensions, anything you can write, JQL for, you can now create a chart without having to learn a custom scripting language like with uh, Easy BI or export the data to Excel or anywhere else. If you know JQL or if you don't, but you've created a saved filter in exactly the same way, you can, you can pull, pull the information directly in using your saved filters. And when you start creating, for example, pivot tables like this, where you can have multiple sets of data being displayed, um, you can see now you can get really, really powerful reports um, as this comes through. So yeah, custom JQL, incredibly powerful. It kind of fills in all the gaps. So if anything you see is missing, you know, oh, I wish I could do that in the reports, particularly if you look back, if we look back at the built-in reports for Jira, very, very limited in what you're able to do. But just a simple feature like this, adding the JQL customization is great. Okay, so one final thing, everything I've shown you so far has been in Jira, but is that where everyone who views data lives? So a lot of people um, that, that are visualizing the data, maybe the C-level management or different parts of your team aren't working in Jira, potentially they're working in Confluence or even elsewhere. So what we have as well is the custom Jira charts macro. So in the same way that in um, in Jira, so let me show you a better example. Yeah, so this is what it looks like in Confluence today. So if you install uh, Jira and Confluence in, in July 2020, this is the report you will get out of the box. This is, the, this is what you're given to show your managers to say, look at this new tool I bought, here's the pie chart I'm representing. And no, it's, it's not a joke, this really is what you're given. Okay, so if you wanna show that to your team, great, but I always thought you could do a bit better. So that's the version with the built-in reports, and this is the exact same chart displayed with custom Jira charts for Confluence. It's the same app I just showed you, every single feature is identical, except that it actually looks nice and is easy to use. So let's jump back over here, uh, and you can see you've got all the same features as well, the ability to um, have the full chart editor directly in Confluence, if that's where you're building it. This works everywhere on cloud server data center. So everything you're seeing is, is fully compatible everywhere you're, you are. Um, and one feature that we're going to be adding really, really soon in the next week, week or two is a uh, user impersonation. And this is key. This is a really, really big point. So right now to be able to see Jira data, you have to have all the correct permissions. You have to have access to that project and be able to see those issues. But what if me as Tom wants to show Chris or, or, or Yasek what I've been working on? but I know they don't have the right access. 
So what we'll be able to do very soon is in Confluence, let me show you back over here, is use something called user impersonation. And I'll be able to select, okay, um, rather than viewing it as, as me every time, I'm, uh, rather than the person that views the page, I'm gonna say, actually, load it as Tom. Every time this page loads, load the data as Tom, which means you can share this page to anyone in your company that has access to the Confluence page, it will still respect the Confluence permissions, and they'll be able to view the charts without worrying at all. So in terms of being able to see the data and share it with the correct people, it's brilliant. It's live, up to date, that anyone that needs to see it can. And again, this comes back to where are people viewing the data? Confluence is a great tool for creating dynamic reports that can be exported and shared with multiple people in different teams. Geo dashboards aren't where people feel comfortable, then given the opportunity to display their data elsewhere. And that's a really important part of custom Jira charts for Confluence. And again, you can see you've got the same issue searcher here. Okay, brilliant. So that's a, it was a demo of custom charts, but also, as I said, a, a, an explanation of how to think about reporting. So the key takeaways for this particularly are understanding where your users are in terms of where they're seeing the data, dashboards, you know, if it's PowerPoints and you're just taking screenshots, still be aware of the reports need to look nice. So however you actually generate the data, it's who's going to be receiving them. So they need to look nice, they need to be easy to build. Um, the example I'll give here is if you're using a powerful tool like Easy BI, well, that's great, but you don't want to be in fear of creating new reports. And you know, I've spent lots of time learning these scripting languages and even just learning new tools. If every month you have to create a new report, but you dread the day you do, because you're gonna to have to learn all the new skills, take a bunch of new notes just to even get started, and that's gonna be a block of you actually showing your data, visualizing it with other people, for other people. So in custom Jira charts, you have a built-in, whenever you create a new chart, there's a simple five-step tutorial built into the app. So without having to do a three-hour YouTube video, you can just click on this and say, okay, so these are my options. Here are the links directly to the documentation for each step. Here's how I can use these different variables. Here's not that many, but every single button on the app, really simple, explains what it does. So you don't have to remember or take notes. So this is something that is, that, that is possible. Okay, um, so just to jump back then to uh, built-in reports. So this is something that's quite interesting if you're using cloud. So I don't know if many people have um, experience next generation projects on Jira clouds. This is just an example of where um, third party tools can actually help even with the built-in Jira reporting. So let's look over here and I'm just gonna show you. So this is a pie chart created from three next generation projects. And all I've done is selected the, the filter, which I'm gonna have to refresh the page a second. So all I've done is select the, the filter for this project, uh, for, for, for these different projects. And I wanna just report across the statuses of multiple projects. There you go. So I've created shared next gen project filter, chart by status. Okay. But what did you, did you notice saying down here? To do, to do, done, in progress, to do, done. That's what you get given. That's, that's what you'll see if you'll create this report. If you use next gen projects, Atlassian's flagship, next gen reporting, out of the box, this is what you'll get. And there's nothing we can do about this. This is because they are considered different statuses for each project, even though they're identical and have the same name. Okay, so this is the exact same report created in custom Jira charts. Custom charts for Jira, next gen reports. The difference is it doesn't care where they come from. It just does a string match and says if they've got the same name, they're the same issue. You can see, Nine five one, uh, which is and then sorry two eight sixteen. So you can see it all adds up, um, but it's just a really simple way of doing it. So yes, we'll yes, I could share a link in the chat to this. So custom charts for Jira, it's on the Atlassian Marketplace. It's also on every single platform, so it's easy for you to get started. But this is just a, a key example. Another one is good. Is do you have fields with the same name? So this doesn't really uh, often happen um, out the box, particularly on server. It's not something that happens that often. Um, let me just share this link for you. So uh, it's not something that happens that often, but you can have 
uh, multiple custom fields with the same name. But in next generation projects, it's the default. It's what you get. So when you create three different projects, if you have a cost field in each project, for example, um, if we look here, you see this next gen field, next gen field. It's created multiple different fields. So we can only report on one. So you want to report on the cost field across three or four next gen projects. Well, you can't. You also get this handy version of irrelevant and none. We could have a poll of who knows the difference between the two without, without Googling it and looking it up and going through the documentation. So that's always quite fun. Uh, but let's see how it works with custom charts. Again, really simple features that help you. So this was next gen fields. Um, so there you go, so next gen field, but three fields with identical names. But instead you just have to match, click match all fields with the same names and it's pulled them all together. So now this is matching all fields called next gen. And you can see the same data is being displayed, option three, option three, but it's also pulling all the other ones through. And none is grouped together. And we can just hide that if we don't want to see it. So this is, um, yeah. So any, um, any custom fields that are created um, in JIRA, we support all, uh, nearly all custom field types. If you look on the documentation page for this, um, it has a big list. Um, of what's coming soon and what's not currently supported. But you can see all the system fields that are supported. These date fields are coming literally in the next week. So that'll be something we'll be adding very soon. Um, all of these custom fields are supported. So if you create these in JIRA, these user pickers, custom user pickers, labels, numbers, project pickers, text fields, anything, um, anything on this list, we support it. And these are coming really soon, like I said, next week. Um, if you're using any third party apps as well, so these are a, a number of apps that we've custom supported that will appear on the lists and work for you. Um, if you do have any problems at all, if you come across a field that you've created yourself or comes from a third party app that doesn't quite work, uh, you've got two options. The, the first option is to let us know, to tell us, and we will, um, we, we will try and uh, we will transport it as quickly as possible. The other workaround, um, as I showed before, is uh, custom JQL. So, if the field isn't quite supported by the app correctly, but you can write a JQL query that finds all people in this special team field with this special data set. If you can write the JQL for it, you can build a chart. That's it's that simple. So if you need a workaround today, JQL. If you need us to help support it, just, just let us know. Um, okay, and just finally to show you a few more features. Um, so line charts again coming really soon. That's just an extension of bar charts, but this is why I show you date fields. So again, dynamic dates, you want to see how your data is changing over time. This is something where you have to just set dynamic ranges between certain dates. If you want colors, great. Maybe, maybe that gets a bit blinding if you're trying to do, uh, becomes a bit of a rainbow. Again, just some simple controls. This is what people need when they're creating quick reports. And it helps with, uh, as I said, making data visualization standardized. So you don't come in every day and the, the, the CEO asks, what does blue mean today? That's probably not the most productive question for the CEO to be asking in your meeting. You want him to focus on the data that's actually important. So every, every single time we're going to say that's triage, for example, this is with dev. Really clear every time people have a, a great association with colors, they do, they do memorize them. Um, so just to jump into a little bit more detail um, with that. So, so there are some admin settings with custom charts as well. Um, if you see here, there's a bunch of color options. So uh, a bunch of people on my team are colorblind, so it can be helpful to have these colorblind accessible colors, which have been uh, selected to just be a bit more vibrant and to um, cater for the, the vast majority of colorblinds like Jutral normally. Uh, but you can also just custom select all the default colors that come with the charts. Again, if you've got standard branding and you want the, to be consistent across an organization, set the colors. It's that simple. You also have a bunch of performance controls as an admin. If you're worried about loads on your system with auto refreshing, you can just turn that off globally. It's gone from all charts. You can also limit the number of issues that are pulled into a chart. So this is something that was said at the, uh, mentioned at the start about um, how this works at scale. And um, if you've got a huge instance uh, and as an admin, a lot of the time you're worried, well, what if someone creates a dashboard that tries to pull in millions of issues and it crashes my JIRA. Well, that won't happen because we won't let it. So the default is 20,000 issues. And the idea here is 
how can you help people make better reports? And lazy reporting is when you say, show me all the data, oh, I just want this bit. Whereas it's much better if you get your users into the mindset of thinking, well, what do I actually want to see? And just ask for the specific bit they need right from the start. And this is helpful when you've got, for example, uh, the simple searcher, so you can find that data straight away. Um, it also helps when, you, when you're pulling in data from, from the queries using JQL. And with that, you can make dashboards that load really quickly, don't have any uh, appreciable impact on your system at scale. Uh, this works very well with large data center instances, people quickly generating reports, and it's also everything I've shown you so far has been on cloud, so it's seamless on cloud as well. Okay, that's a lot of talking from me, so I'm going to uh, open up to, to, to questions now and see if anyone wants to know anything else. I'll just read through the chat, see if I missed anything. Yeah, so a few questions about a few things about saying Easy BI. So yeah, Easy BI is, is a great tool. It has got a huge install base and um, it, is, it is amazing. You can do almost anything with it, which is why it's, it's a brilliant tool, but um, it falls down at the, the, the complexity. So you can see here, this looks great, great range of charts. We should do, a, I'd love to do a, a workshop one day when we can all meet together in person and say, cool, let's, let's build this. This picture looks amazing, let's build it. And see if anyone can do it even in eight hours build a report like this with your data the way you want it because it's it's incredibly difficult to pull the right data in to get it to look like this it's really challenging so a lot of it is about just making data easy and custom chart sits in the in the sweet spot between these two it says well it's a report until it looks good and is easy to use it's slightly more advanced than the basic one but also gives you a lot of a lot of power so if anyone wants to unmute, uh, as Chris said, you can now unmute yourself if you want to ask a question directly or, or add it in the chat. Okay. Um, so one thing to say is that everything you've seen so far, it's all, everything is, is, is uh, contained inside the same app, custom charts with Jira. Uh, the two gadgets available is the simple search gadget and the custom charts for Jira gadget. And when you add it in, you can switch between all the different chart types without worrying about where the data comes from. So you can see here, this is now using the new colors, the colorblind colors, they're a bit more vibrant because I've changed it. Okay, that's, yeah, that's everything I wanted to, to show you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it open to questions or I'll hand back to Yasek for a minute. Yeah, before we, we proceed with the questions, I, um, I will just quickly mention that um, we understand that some companies need a little bit more time uh, testing new new apps. So right now we, we offering an extended evaluation period. So you can just kick off an evaluation and also uh, right now for every evaluation of custom charts, we add a free license server and data center uh, of Sketch. And uh, Sketch is the other app we have, which basically allows you uh, to edit images within Confluence. So if you ever need to do, you know, documentation or write a blog, you include pictures into your Confluence pages, and then you cannot edit it. Sketch is the answer. You got the version control, you get the most basic uh, edit options, like in Paint. Uh, you can crop, change the sizes, make arrows, and uh, yeah, right now we uh, we offer it for free for server and data center. Cloud, we made it super cheap. Uh, so for every uh, evaluation of custom charts, you can just let me know. We also search the link on the um, LinkedIn event page. Uh, and then I, I will be able to send you uh, the 100% discount codes that you can apply on the marketplace. Uh, it's pretty useful you know, for all the people who, who have any pictures in Confluence to have the, the, the you know, possibility to actually edit it. Yeah, the, the, the thing that bothers me is Confluence doesn't come with a crop or rotate tool. So even if it just saves you a few seconds, but thousands of times, then that still adds up to a lot of time. And like Yasek said, it's a, it's a free, we're, we're giving it as 100% discount. So even if you're just a little bit interested, it's, it's worth playing around with. It's quite fun um, to, to just see how it works. Just directly in the editor, you can just click sketch and just start playing with it, so. 
Cool. All right. Do we have any any other questions? We had a, a bit, a little bit of questions around Easy BI, uh, the different custom fields. Do you guys have any any further questions? Again, I encourage to ask any questions as you you can just use it as a free consultancy. We still got fifteen minutes, so if you have any use cases you'd like to discuss, any uh, challenges, any any questions at all, just free uh, feel free to share it now. Okay, well, if, if not, I just want to leave you with, with this. So this is our actual production support dashboard that I spend my entire life looking at on the screen next to me. It tells me exactly what um, is happening on each app, the status of everything, tickets that I need to reply to and triage, um, all this information pulled through about where the channel types is. It's really good for service desk. Uh, you can see how many anonymous portal requests, clearly the majority, how many come through by email, portal, we've got the widget on the marketplace listing. Again, really great data to have. And this is pulled through directly using the request channel type field. So we don't even have to do anything special for that. I've just renamed them to make them easier. So this is what I sit looking at every day. And like I say, colors are super consistent, really important. Those are the nine in triage, and this is them split across each app, as you can see here. So I we, we live and breathe what we actually, actually make. Um, you can see here, we're still using built-in Jira charts. And the, the idea, pretty much the driving force behind this is saying, well, let's start at the top and work down. So I start, we started with a pie chart. We built a few more, we replaced the 2D table. And now we're gonna be replacing the line chart very soon um, with our own custom version, which will have all the same features you've just seen, um, very similar to, to a bar chart with a line chart. So we can make it to the bottom of this page and we can replace, this is the date field. So you can see this will be being replaced really soon. Then, then, then we'll be happy. If we can replace and improve on every single built-in tool and then go a step further, that, 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 that's where our, we're aiming at the moment. So finally with that, I will just say we have our documentation here, but we also have a public feature roadmap. So we will tell you, we tell you exactly what we're working on. And these are linked to the development tickets directly. So unlike some of the companies where you have no idea what's going on or when something's gonna happen, if it's in development, it's actually sat with our developers coding it right now. So these are actively being worked on, the date fields, the user impersonation I mentioned, as well as su support for the portfolio team field on server, which is just a, a small feature. Again, you can see our backlog, what we're gonna be adding, what we're gonna be improving, this will keep expanding, but it gives you confidence that we're actually working on it. It's an active living app. If you do have any questions um, or any feedback at all, if you raise a ticket, you'll you could you'll be able to see my face in in you know a few minutes. Usually, I can reply to you and we can talk about what you need and how we can help. Cool, brilliant. Well, that's um, everything I want to say. So I'll I'll leave that with I'll leave it to you, Naya. So. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom, and uh, thank you everybody for for joining us today. And uh, yeah, as Tom said, we will be more than happy to answer any questions individually if you'd like to discuss your specific use cases you just free, feel free to reach out and also let me know if you'd like to uh, get the free license for sketch and be able to actually edit images within confluence thank you everybody have a great end of the day and uh, yeah again feel free to reach out with any questions <laughs>